You're listening to the Casual Swinger Podcast. As your host, we need to warn you that the material you're about to hear may be sexual or explicit in nature. This podcast is intended for an adult audience. Now, we don't expect you to act like adults. What's the fun in that? We're a married couple living in Florida with over 13 years of experience in the lifestyle, and we take almost nothing seriously. Casual Swinger is a variety show, meaning we'll cover everything from music to events, travel, and even the occasional hilarious screw-up. Our show is about entertainment. We're not licensed professionals. Not anything. And our stories, commentary, and guidance should not be confused with the opinions of a licensed professional. Now that you know, let's take those pants off and get comfy. Hey, hey, all you sexy fuckers. Welcome to this episode of Casual Swinger. I'm your co-host, Mallory. You're really a host. I just kind of hang out and do the whole color commentary thing. Yeah, em- emphasis on ho. Ho, ho. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, everybody? This is Mickey. All right. So today we're going to talk about the seasonality of confidence and how we or we feel we're perceived as it impacts our successes and failures and the lifestyle. And we're just going to touch on some things that might have thrown us on our, off our game recently and uh, how we addressed it. Yeah, I think some of it changed over time, too. So it's it's going to be, I think it's kind of a nice companion to the last episode. And then after this, maybe we do something silly because this is like <laughs> yeah. two semi-serious episodes in a row. Yeah, they're going to think we're like uh, a couple of yours around here. No? Thank you for not hitting the button. No! Anyway. Oh. Let's talk uh, some introductions and yeah. some updates. Yeah, like a little lead in, talk about some shit, what we've been doing. Yeah. We're here and we're on time for a fucking change. I know, right? Hi. Hey, Look at up? us like being on our game. I know. Anyway. I'm kind of proud of us. Uh, PCAP. Oh, yeah. Podcast a Palooza. If you live under a rock, that's what it's called. It's in Palm Springs. It's the first weekend in June. It's going to be amazing, so please join us. Just added another new podcast, uh, some familiar faces from Dallas. If you guys don't know these guys, you're missing the fuck out. Black and Kinky just announced today that they are joining the cast and crew of Podcast. Fuck yeah. So Bomber and Bell, Bell's sexy little ass. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's going to be a good time. It's going to be wonderful. I can't fucking wait. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Of course, there's a bunch of other really great podcasts that are going to be there. You know, it's for me, I guess Podcast to Blues is just kind of the most positive environment that I've been that I'm ever a part of in the lifestyle with the with the content creators and the people and in the theme nights. I mean, Kate's theme nights are fucking off the hook. They really are. Once I figure out what they mean. Yeah, right. <laughs> Some of them do take a little bit of work. Like, I'm I'm like just, what is that? I'm just less cultured. Right. Well, we're less European, too. I mean, she does a lot of European shit out there. So I think, yeah. That's fair. Anyway, um, so what have we been up to? What do we have going on? Well, I know we're going to what was, well, I guess, no, before we get into that, uh, I think one of my favorite things that happened in March, since, by the way, we're caught up now, so we can talk about Are March. Are we? Yeah. Okay, thank God. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pretty excited about that. But I think my favorite thing that happened in March so far is Steak and Blowjob Day. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for <laughs> celebrating this year what you have left out so many years before. I have not left out so many years, but it's just not been always on the calendar. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm usually traveling actually during Steak and Blowjob, or you were. Yeah, one so of we us were, is. We were both in town. So um, March 14th, which is one month after Valentine's Day, we don't celebrate Valentine's Day in our house because our anniversary is the week before. And thank you for not making <laughs> me do that, by the way. <laughs> so the 14th of March has been Steak and Blowjob Day. I mean, it's obviously an unofficial holiday. I wish, like, you know, oh, it's the official banks as fuck. It's a thing now. <laughs> All right. If if Valentine's Day and Hallmark can get together, right. then Steak That's and true. Blowjob Day can get together with, you know, fucking Ruth Chris Steakhouse and make some shit happen. <laughs> I do like the opportunity to take you out to dinner. That was really cool. Because, like, for our anniversary, we rotate, right? You do one year, I do the next year. And I like that. But it gives me an opportunity to, like, I don't know. Treat you, I guess. It was fantastic. It was a great dinner. Uh, I think it was hilarious that our waiter who, you know, we know our waiter at this point. We've been to this place enough. And uh, we're like, it's steak and blowjob days. Like, I'm getting out of here and going home with a steak. <laughs> I'm so. like, that's not how it works. And now, in all fairness, like you get plenty of blowjobs and steak throughout the year. But it's just an excuse, again, to make sure we get it on the calendar. I, I think and intentionally go about, out on a school night. Right? That's what I love. It was on a school night. But I think we need to talk about your definition of plenty. Because, you know, plenty, I mean, well, there can I mean, always be more. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> so By leaving. the way, I'm not starving, guys. 
pretty good. <laughs> so we're heading uh, out of town again this week. That's right. We're going back to our old stomping grounds of the Mid-Atlantic. We're going to Virginia to visit the Grand Spawn. I love it. And casual Caitlin. She's been doing so many great things for us in the store. I'm so fucking proud of her. Yeah, she's done a hell of a job. She's, uh, I mean, some of you have actually talked to her. If you reach out on the chat, sometimes you catch her. And, uh, you know, some of you are like, hey, can we please talk to Mickey and Mallory? And she's like, no problem. Here you go. Hands us right over. Yeah, so, no, that's uh, great. She's I, been very handy. I'm excited. And I think we'll get to see a few uh, familiar faces and good friends while we're up there. Because we're also going to be going to Taboo on April 9th to celebrate their 18th birthday. Oh, uh, that is a big deal because Taboo's finally legal. I can finally tap that ass. It's going to be great. Let's do it. Now, we haven't been at Taboo in for. Ever. Yeah, no, since long before we um, moved down to Florida. So I'm super excited. Again, we get to see some friendly faces that are going to be joining us that these listeners might know. So. That's right. I believe, as I understand it, the sweet life is going to join us. Ooh, squeal. So Locke and Trist, so a sexy, sweet shoe having ass. And yeah, Locke's smooth ass. It's going to mm-hmm. be awesome. No, I don't know if his ass is actually smooth. I'm just saying he is smooth. I want to try. <laughs> but I, I want to test it out. You know, I got to tell you, Taboo, it's been a long time since we've been to Taboo. And, you know, that was always kind of our home club. It was our favorite. I mean, it, it just, it's one of the classiest joints around. It is. It's, it's always been well run. Um, the staff, the volunteers have always been great. The playrooms were fantastic. Still some of the best playrooms as far as a uh, club that I've ever experienced. So. Yeah, they, they kind of, I think we're a little spoiled. I think we were always a little spoiled because the playrooms were so damn good at uh taboo but you know we talked to vicky i think we're going to get us a nice little corner there in the main room and we're going nice. to get to hang out with lock and trist which we're very excited about that again is on saturday april 9th if you guys have time and can make your way to taboo please join us let the good folks at the front desk know casual yeah. swinger sent you yep that's outside Bal- baltimore right in, in catonsville mm-hmm. so that's going to be a good time so that'll be a good what else we got going on um, well, we can talk about the pub crawl we did in St. Augustine, but we'll probably touch on that later, won't we? Yeah, a little bit, but okay. that's, that was a lot of fun, by the way. Yeah, I really, I love St. Augie anyway, but we kind of, it was like kind of halfway to St. Augustine Beach, right? I mean, it was kind of a neat little... I actually very much enjoyed if um, anyone who's listening is local. I've done like the St. Augustine proper, like the historic side. Haven't really spent a ton of time in St. Augustine Beach. Uh, huge mistake. Huge mistake like oversight of my part. I'm totally down with going back out there and hanging out and partying. Some great local joints are down there. Yeah. I and the agree. food was ama- really fucking good. Yeah. I was actually stunned by that. I was, it was, I thought it was just going to be like standard bar fare. Yeah. Those wings were righteous. Apparently they <laughs> smoked right? them like right there. I play, the place we ate, if you guys go to St. Augustine, by the way, is called the beacon. It's kind of like a par. It's like a gastro pub kind of thing, but uh, the drinks were good. The wings were good. Burger was good. You know, it's, it's kind of hard uh, to find good food in a beach town. And that was actually really good. But, uh, hey, something else coming up for you guys. This is coming up starting April 1st through April 30th. This is going to be primarily on Twitter. I think you're going to see it roll over into places like Instagram. You're going to see it in some other places. What Mm -hmm. am I talking about? I'm talking about 30 Days of Lingerie. Ooh, I'm like fast, like dork clapping right now because I'm so excited. So something that I did was start to pack for our trip. And uh, during that, I'm pulling out pieces because we have a nice Airbnb on the mountain that's kind of like got a cabin feel. And I'm like, fuck, this is going to be a great place to take pictures at. So I started packing my lingerie to take pictures while we're there. And uh it's a good thing we're bringing the truck because I have two boxes. Holy shit, woman. I know. Well, we do have 30 days to take pictures I, for. I know, I know. So I think you're going to like my selections. Oh, this is going to be good we stuff. Did, so we, obviously, we have a shitload of laundry. We did. And we do have some pictures that we took last weekend. To We did. Yeah. yeah so we got a really, good start. I'm really excited. And I, I like that we're going to be able to kind of put multiple images out there per day. And we're also going to put links pretty much every day for our posts anyway to the store where you can get the outfit if you like what Mallory's wearing. Yeah, I love that. What store is that? That's (laughs) casualtoys.com. Always the salesman. I love you. I gotta do it. I spend a lot of time on that fucking store. You know what I love about 30 Days of Lingerie, especially right now, which, you know, it'll be a little self-explanatory as we get into further into the episode. It it always gives me a, a little bit more confidence, right? And like that extra girl power when you're seeing all these women post themselves in effectively vulnerable positions, but like feeling empowered and sexy and courageous and all these other wonderful things. It's my, it's probably my favorite month of the year now. I love it. And speaking of, uh, you know, and I, we didn't actually put this in the show notes, but 
I really want to give a shout out to our ambassadors oh, for yeah. Casual Toys. They're so amazing. So that's Honey Spoon, that's Alley Cat, that's Peppy Pineapple. Those girls are such badasses. A hundred percent. I love seeing them work together. Like they don't compete with each other. They're good to each other. They're good to the community. They're sex positive. They're body positive. There's so many good things about them. And they're all three of them are sexy as shit. Holy fuck. Yes. A hundred percent agreed. I love the lift up Yeah, that they give everyone and each other. You hit yeah. nail on the head. Uh, it, it really is kind of amazing. But uh, so I guess it's probably a good time since we're talking about casual toys so much. You know, this is something that we haven't talked about in a while while we were at that pub crawl in St. Augustine, unique condoms came up. Yeah, I was having a conversation with a couple who's super hot, super sweet, by the way. Um, hey. Super hot. Um, I know I'm, who I'm, you're talking about. Yeah. Cocoa Beach. <laughs> Cocoa Beach, she's talking about you. Anyway, don't make me blush. Um, yeah, it just came up in conversation, and I, I don't even know what the segue was, but just going into the fact that it's a game changer, especially for someone like me who's sensitive to latex condoms. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with all the swinger shit we got coming up, you know, unique condoms are really special to us. Mm -hmm. We absolutely love them. We use them personally. They're the only condom I will use. Uh, I know they're pretty much your condom of choice. Uh, you put them on your partners. Like, I do. I do feel this. like that's the trade off. And I think it, that's a little sexy, too. Also, I like to collect the insert penis here stickers on your butt. And yeah, sometimes my butt gets them. Yes, that's true. <laughs> but they are three times thinner and three times stronger than latex. No taste. After all, who wants to lick a Halloween? So taste? fucking important. Because if you're going multiple rounds, like, yeah. and you go down there and it's like. It's like chewing on a mm, balloon. It's just not pleasant. No, and these don't leave delicious. any residual flavor or yeah. smell. None whatsoever. So they work with every kind of lube, and we've got deals for these bundled with Uber Lube, which is our favorite lube. If you didn't know that already, you can get 10% off if you buy 10 packs or more. We call that our multi-pack special. And then there's the size sampler where you get 10% off if you buy one of each size. I like it. And, and that is the end of my casual toys pitch. <laughs> and remember to not lube the inside or your penis before putting them on. Absolutely. You want to put them on dry. Put it on dry. Matter of fact, if you just got a great blowy, dry it off before you do it. All right, let's talk a little bit about um, what we're going to hit in the next uh, part of the show here. So before we jump off and get a little real here for a bit, uh, because we've done a bunch of that lately, um, you actually brought uh, some confidence puns to the party, didn't you? I did. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, this episode is, you know, the, the man in the mirror, the woman in the mirror. It's a confidence crisis. And I was like, there's got to be like a good confidence joke out there because this is so fucking heavy of an I episode. Fucking love it. These are great. Uh, well, okay, all right. So I'm I'm gonna go first. But so my toilet stopped working when it gained a little confidence. You know why? Why? Because it wouldn't take shit from anybody. <laughs> That's disgusting and hilarious. That's on brand for. We're us gonna now. rank for poop. Uh, all right. So I've been dealing with confidence in shoes. So I bought a sauna. Oh no. Yeah. It's so I can give myself esteem. <laughs> 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 oh my god, these are horrible. I can't believe I did Some this. of them are pretty cheesy. <laughs> why did the man with no fingers have low self-confidence? I don't know why. Because he could never count on himself. What? <laughs> no, that one wasn't as funny, oh, but okay. it was so cute. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what do you say? One or two more each? All right. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Right. What do you call a knight with great confidence? What? Certain. Certain. Really? Certain. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the I'm gonna hit the trombone again. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh my god. All right. So what do you call it when you know your way around a store? This is definitely you. What's that? Shelf confidence. Fuck off. That's you at Publix. <laughs> That's All right. you. One more? Yeah, all right, go ahead. Okay, because we're gonna have enough of these puns that I feel like we're we should be done here. So I feel the most confident telling chemistry jokes anyway. I'm in my element when I do. Oh, that's definitely <laughs> you. That's definitely Thank you. a joke. Try the veal, tip your waitress. We'll be here all night, folks. Uh, all right, seriously, though, we're going to come back after the break. We're going to talk about some of the things that have gone on recently that rattled at least my cage a little bit. Uh, um, ditto. Kind of bouncing off last episode's theme of it can happen to anybody. We thought we'd go the rest of the way down the rabbit hole with you guys and tell a little bit of a personal story along with it, maybe drive the rest of this story home. Mel, you want to do the thing? The thing? All the well, things? Well, come here and I'll put it in my mouth. 
Oh, please. No, is that a different thing? No, no, that's okay. that's fine. That's the thing I really <laughs> wanted you to do anyway. All right, guys, we're Casual Swinger everywhere. You can find us at casualswinger.com and feel free to shoot us a note, podcast at casualswinger.com. You can find us on social media. That's Twitter, uh, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as the dating sites, Double Date Nation, SDCS, Alessa, and Cassidy. Mm, there you go. We'll be back in a hot second just after this with more of the woman or man, as it were, mm-hmm. in the mirror. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. And we're back. This is still Mickey, and it's still Casual Swinger, last I checked. And I'm still Mallory, and I think I fucked up the words to that song, but I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look later. Gonna, like, last was the Eminem I, Mallory Mathers episode. I know. I can't help it. Music's my, my, it gets my soul on fire. I love so, it. Are you Janet or LaToya? Oh, please don't make me choose. Totally Janet. Yeah. Yeah. You might like have her Latoya's music singing videos, ability, though. Definitely. <laughs> Sideline, her music videos, like, in the 80s and 90s, I totally, like, know from memory and and wanted to dance just like her. No kidding. Yeah, seriously. She was absolutely one of my top three, like, dance icons. Well, that explains a lot, because your dance style is similar to her, so. Well, thanks. That's uh, a huge compliment. So You're let's talk, dancer. let's talk about the woman or the man in the mirror here. Let's, let's start with perception, right? Is perception and reality are versus reality, but Perception's kind of everything. And in our discussions, we're talking about the perception of ourselves, right? And that self-awareness or internalizing, as well as what we feel the perception is by others of us. Oh, yeah. And how we view things is reality. Perception is reality. That's a, a thing a lot of people say. It's how you view it is probably how it is, at least from your perspective. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And that's dangerous. So they're both very rewarding, but yet precarious conversations to have with yourself, right? And since you're here with us listening, the audience, right? Our listeners, the others, right? Yeah, yeah I, I think it, it, you're 100% right. I think that the conversation is extremely precarious because you could tip off into a very bad place very quickly if you allow your perception to become skewed, mm-hmm. right? And perception is such a bullshit game. I agree, it can be, especially when that perception is deviates from your normal foundation or your, or your normal your normal line, baseline, right? Well, how can it not, right? I mean, we I blame social media and the filter generation for making it so fucking mm. easy to feel complete, utter shitty about yourself. I think I know where you're going, but continue. Well, so I think about it. You wake up every day and you see yourself at your absolute worst. The worst oh, like, version of yourself. When you first wake up and you look at yourself oh, yeah. in the mirror. That's not cute. No, it's not. I mean... It's you got bags under your eyes, socks on your teeth, the dog shit in your mouth. Your hair looks like a couple of rats took up residence overnight. Why does nobody ever wake up looking like a fucking million dollars like the girls in the movies do? Like they have they wake up all cute and <laughs> reach over and have a deep tongue kiss. <laughs> if you did that to me in the morning, you'd throw up in my mouth. <laughs> that is a true story. And you know what? But if it was too real and it hit too close to home, no one would watch it because we have that shit every day. Yeah, we want the fantasy. You're probably right. But right. then, right, then you pick up your phone. You see everybody you know looking like a fucking supermodel. Here's where, okay, yes. I'm I'm right there with you. Okay. And perfect eyes, perfect skin, perfect everything. We see ourselves through the lens of our own worst moments. Mm -hmm. Yet we see everyone else at their absolute best all day, every day. Well, and even in those moments, right, when I'm about to go look at myself in the mirror, the first thing I do is pick up my phone. And I'm sorry. I know it's a bad habit. I should probably bring a little more awareness to myself and do other things before I go. But it's the first thing I do. Check my messages and tech, check social. Yeah, see, I, I usually read the news, which makes me just as depressed. But, you know, the reality is that everything in our lives, from advertisements to the filters we use on our phones, is built to tell us one thing. I am not good enough. I Billboards, yeah. ads, filters, yeah. social, everything is trying to make you into something you're not. Fake eyelashes, Botox, fake tits. It's everything. A hair dye for men. Everything is telling us. Wrinkles, not wrinkles. You yeah. should be something other than what you are. How can you not have a fucked up perception? That's true. I, yeah. How can I, you not? The perception is skewed. 
So I don't want to throw a pity party here, right? I, I don't think that's on brand for us. But I think you make a great point here. And there's two ways to look at this, right? Depending on where your mindset is or how it influences your mindset, sometimes those images, like when we're talking about our ambassadors, sometimes I look at, you know, those girls and what they're doing and it lifts me up. Or I'm on Instagram and maybe it's the opposite. Maybe, like you said, I see the filters and the perfection and whatnot. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, I'm getting old. Or Jesus Christ, I'm just not making the progress I want to make in my, you know, workout routine. And then those little nuggets get stuck in the back of your brain and it plants a seed of negativity. And subconsciously, it just starts to fucking grow and layer upon layer of bullshit that operates back there until it comes to the forefront. And it's devastating in some cases, right? Yeah. Like it, it really changes everything about my day or my week sometimes. Yeah, well, I think that these malformed perceptions that are a result of what we see around us have led us to confidence crises, whether they're yeah. ours or whether they're our listeners or whether they're just, you know, people that we come across in the lifestyle that are struggling. And I think this is a good time for us to discuss what some of our thoughts are on these subjects and how they're impacting our relationships and our lifestyle journey, ours, just us. Yeah, no, I, I have to agree because it's, I think we mentioned this in the last episode, rarely... Have we, even in the last 16 years, which is crazy, do we go through these highs and lows, or these lows especially, I should say. Highs are definitely more frequent. But the lows at the same time. So we've had the benefit of being able to support each other. And when we have these lows at the same time, it, it gets a little more challenging, right? Because you're trying to figure your bullshit out by while also supporting your partner. <laughs> so you're giving advice and, and trying to be supportive and you're trying to believe your own bullshit at the yeah. same time. Well, and when so. we were not casual swinger, we didn't do it in front of 30,000 people. That's true. Right? That's true. So. And, I, and to be perfectly honest, I'm I'm a little embarrassed to have these conversations because I feel like after all this time, I should know better. I should have the tools in my tool belt to go about attacking this fixing it, being proactive about it. And I just don't, I I'm, I'm fucking human. And sometimes I break a little. And when I break a little, it takes me some time to get back to where I need to be. And I mean, again, I know I'm human. I know that's not out of the context of normal, but I just wish that I had some sort of like glorious transcendence where I don't have this doubt or these struggles anymore. I think in my head, especially like in my 20s, I had it. At some point, I'm going to reach in my life that this will no longer be an issue. And newsflash, that's not how it works. We are constantly evolving and evolution comes with some obstacles, right? And adaptation. So are, are you okay with me getting just a little long-winded here? Go right ahead. Okay. It's your it, show, too. I please. say it every episode. <laughs> no, but seriously, stop me if I get too far in the weeds or, or you want to contribute. So I'm going to give you an example. I am I started comparing myself, and I think social media is a good one, to pretty much every woman I see. And, and that's on social. That's in walking about life. I just got back from a work trip and a conference, and I caught myself doing it in the moment. And literally nitpicking myself apart. And this was happening in a very short format, but very consciously. You know, in in our day-to-day -day lives, it does happen on a subconscious level because I keep saying that we're relational, right? What I, am I in proximity to this, right? Um, but lately, it's just, it's occupying more of my conscious mind. And I really want to stop myself from using these things as a weapon, you know, I don't want to tear myself down. I don't want to find all my tiny flaws or just obsess over, you know, my perceived shortcomings. And here's what gets me. I cannot figure out for the life of me where this is coming from, why it started, you know, even in the quietest parts of my mind, you know, this little negative piece of judgment you know something of my own volition just skates into the forefront and makes itself known it's like 
you remember the <laughs> pop-up ads back in like the early 2000s and like you'd be in the middle of reading something it almost scared the shit out of you you're like oh where the fuck did you come from i thought you were gonna talk about clippy the little paper clip that would <laughs> pop up from office and be like hey motherfucker you need some help I was more no right. get the fuck away that was more 90s oh sorry i'm old but like and it, that's just the tip of the iceberg you know and and as you can tell, I've been obsessing over this because of all the little fucking finite detail, you know, I get into there. But it's, I'm actually concerned. Well, I think anyone having these feelings and, and living through this is concerned mm -hmm. because they're looking at themselves in the mirror and asking the question I just asked not 10 minutes ago. What's wrong with me? Yeah. Am I, am I not good enough? Well, and then I'm beating myself up am for beating up? myself up. Yeah. I'm fucked up in the head. There's something wrong with me. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. I'm going to take a deep breath. Just take and just a go breath. hide for a second. I don't think you need to hide. I no. think that I think you had a legitimate, you know, angle there. You know, I I I think maybe the the best way for me to chime in here is is with a story about where I was about a month and a half ago, uh, you know, just prior to our little hiatus which honestly didn't have much to do with our hiatus but mm -hmm. uh i don't think you're gonna like this but it absolutely happened uh, i'm just gonna start with the most important thing i'm so fucking sick of being goddamn fat i just want to be skinny i want to fit in my little skinny shorts god fucking god, damn it please <laughs> oh my god i love that it's one kid. of my favorite tiktoks <laughs> that's a good one but, you know, I kind of feel that on every level, right? So here we go. And this is my turn to talk for a second. So just buckle up, kids. We went to a local group's meet and greet for a night out, which has gotten to be a little too unusual for us lately. Uh, we had gotten to the point where we really weren't going out and doing a lot of stuff. We had so much stuff coming at us that we get to do. Uh, thankfully, we're not bitching, by the way. Thankfully, because of Casual Swinger, we get to do a lot of cool shit, so we really didn't have to look that hard to find fun stuff to yeah, do. Yeah, we're definitely a little spoiled. A lot. And so with that happening, we figured, what the hell? Let's get out of the house. Let's go do something fun. Great plan. And honestly, it's a great group of people that we went to see. It was one of their local meet and greets, so none of this is to disparage anything that they do or anything about what they do. They're fucking awesome. Uh, so let me set the stage real quick. Even, earlier that week, I'd picked up brand new glasses. Now, yeah, my eyes don't work like they did when I was 17, and I kind of need them to read stuff like my phone so I can see how not good enough I am when I look at my phone, right? Uh, but I, I was supposed to wear them all the time, and I just kind of hate how they make me look. So before going to this party, I reached into the closet and I grabbed a sport coat because it was going to be really cold outside for Orlando. It was like 16 degrees, 20 degrees, some crazy shit. It was freezing. You remember? Yeah, it was very cold that evening. Yeah, it was really cold. And we were dying just walking from the parking garage or the hotel rather to the restaurant. It was, it was freezing. And but, you know, that's why I grabbed a sport coat and figured, you know, dress it up a little bit, try and look nice for the party. Well, I put all my stuff on before we left the hotel room and it hit me like a brick in the face. I look like a fucking English professor. <laughs> I remember you saying that. Well, maybe a history professor, even worse, but not a cool one like Indiana Jones. I look like some old, I felt like I needed to have like the suede patches on my arm, like my uh, elbows or something. I looked ridiculous in, in my own head. Right. I was going to say, you felt like you looked ridiculous. I looked at you and thought you looked fucking great. And I love you in your glasses. So I... But I get what you're saying. Oh, and but the spiral had started, right? And right. Much, much nope. like as a guy. Totally get it. And I think most of the guys out there that can relate to this, once you get in your head and you, you start worrying about something, it just gets worse. And this is the quicksand that I kind of referred to in the last episode. Once you start flailing emotionally, it just gets worse. Kind of like when you, they call it melty man too, and you start to lose your heart on when during lifestyle play sessions, it just gets worse. Well, it's the same thing with confidence. It just got worse. This feeling hung with me throughout dinner, and it was a great dinner. And once we got to the party, we saw a couple of familiar faces and got some hugs. But in general, there were three or four couples that we had chatted with on SDC about introducing ourselves at the event. We took up a spot by a table near the entrance and far away from the speakers because they were was, fucking yeah, loud. That, that was a very, very loud venue. That well, night. it was a very narrow venue. Right. And the speakers were at one end, and it was all concrete, and they mm. were extremely loud. Yeah. And so the whole place was just 
it was really, really bright, if that makes any sense to anybody out there. Really, the highs were really high. It wasn't like unz, 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 right. bump, bump. It was really and, high and, and bright. And typically at an event like this, the first like hour or so is like the mingling chat, and then they that gets turned up, right? And yeah. it was just turned up. It was just turned up from the second yeah. we walked in the door. But anyway, we started looking for some of our new friends, and the first couple made eye contact with Mallory, and I saw it. Oh, I could see it from yeah. where I was standing. And the first couple made eye contact with Mallory and ear to ear grins. Like he looked, he had the look on his face, like hell yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm used to that. And I get it, man. Guys, she's hot. If you don't know that Mallory's hot, she is. I love you. And so, but they looked over at me, my English professor looking ass, and the smiles went away. They literally stone faced. They actually turned and kept walking. They walked away. They didn't even walk up and talk to us. I did not see this happen. I, I be- did. I'm taller than you. Yeah. I, I believe you. I'm just, I'm awestruck. Yeah. Well, you want to talk about ouch, right? And it happened more or less the same way two more times before I finally turned and looked at you. And in fairness, the music was really getting to me. And that's what I thought would happen, yeah. happen that you were just done with the music. And I was too, frankly. Like, it was just yeah. really hard to have conversations or even, like, dance. It was like armpits to nipples. Yeah. Like it was just humans fucking everywhere. It took me 30 minutes to pay for our drinks so we could leave. Right. It was it was very, very, very crowded, uh, which is a good thing for the people that run the meet and greet. But for us, it was not as awesome. But I suggested we go back to the hotel. I'd had enough of getting my ass kicked from a confidence perspective, and I was kicking my own ass too. So it just, I'd had enough. And so we go back to the hotel, and I suggested that we peruse SDC a little bit and maybe try to set up a date or two for some time in the future, right? I, I wasn't willing to give up yet. I'm, just, I'm pretty stubborn. I wasn't willing to give up. So Mallory picks out four profiles. That's true. And upon inspection, I said something to myself that I've not forgotten since, and it's, it hung with me for over a month. And I know you're not going to like this. No. Just going to have to deal with it. Uh, I said, Jesus Christ. I'm not even my own wife's type. Uh, I could really kick myself. So, a few things. You know how you make that joke about, I'm really surprised because as a child, I figured quicksand would be much more of a problem as an adult. Yeah. And I don't think it's physical quicksand. I think it's mental and emotional quicksand that we create. I think it's actually the problem. It was an allegory that they were painting for us. We just didn't get the joke at the time. <laughs> well, Bugs Bunny and Scooby-Doo had that shit down. Yes, didn't they? exactly. Second well. of all, I read that wrong. And I think sometimes I get a little overly confident in the, our ability to read each other because we've been together a very long time. So t- sometimes I take things at face value and don't really get into the empathetic uh, parts of it, and I had no idea that those were the struggles you had had that evening. I until didn't we tell t- you either. I though. know, I know, in all fairness, but I, I'd i like to think that we, for the most part, have an inkling when something's a little off-kilter and more than just what's on the surface, right? So I apologize that I missed that and I didn't question it a little more because I would never want you to feel that I wasn't, you aren't, oh, how do I say this? You You are always my first and foremost, period, end of story. So I felt like I failed you. Second, I was a little haphazard with that selection of boys. So when we get back to the hotel, I thought, you know, it was a little bit of a strange night. Like we tried and it was a little funky and it was still fairly early. It was like around midnight or so, still kind of early. So yeah, let's talk about setting up a date and getting a little sexy and, you know, maybe taking a few pictures and you know, little 69 and before bed, whatever. I was just trying to go with the flow. And I literally picked four people, similar body type, similar age ranges. Didn't read their fucking profile because I was a little hammered. I wasn't drunk, drunk, but I was getting there. Like, I knew as soon as my body finished digesting the last drink that I had, I'd be feeling really fucking good. And it didn't really occur to me to dig in deeper because I ha- I honestly I haven't ha- been having much luck which I'll go into here in a little bit later with you know dating and talking to guys and setting up dates I've been kind of hitting a fucking wall again and so I was just like fuck it well those two parameters go what's the worst gonna happen we chat I don't like them we move on because that's effectively what's been happening and maybe it's me maybe it's them I don't know so I didn't really dig in nothing about that I, I never want you to feel like that way. Everything about you is my type, but there is only one you on this planet. 
and I, I, I've looked for so long, and when I found you, that was it for me. You know, I I can't find another you, which is why you know. Well, in that statement that I made in my head, and I have just said it out loud in front of God knows how many people, uh, is something I did to myself. You didn't say it. I did. No, I know. But and but I pushed right, my, I pushed my own confidence down to maybe an all time low. Yeah, I did it to myself because when I said it, I I literally hated it. Yeah, but I feel like I could have parented that better. Does that make <laughs> no, sense? Yeah, right. Like I I do. I feel like I had a hand in that, and I apologize because you were my everything. And I love you dearly, and I think you're the sexiest human on the planet because you fucked my mind and my body. Every chance I yeah, got. Yeah, like there's there's no one else like you. Um, I mean, anyways. All right, I'm going to go on on my tirade. Is that is that okay? Go right ahead. So, in tying into selecting these potential, you know, singles online, um, there are some prospects for me on the horizon. You know, there were some that were actually kind of promising, and I'm so far off my game um, when it comes to it because I started blaming all of them and i'm like oh, this is fucking ridiculous i think it's really it's got to be me i am the common denominator here and i think what it is is i have doubt i'm doubting the value i'm bringing to the equation or, or questioning what they may be thinking of me whether that's a physical or intellectual like i'm really scared one of the worst insults somebody probably could hand to me is you're a moron or you're an idiot like, I don't know why I have it in my head. I have this really irrational fear that someone's going to think I'm stupid. They don't know you I, at all if well, that's the case. But I don't paint myself as some sort of, like, intellectual. I never got a Mensa letter. I know. <laughs> I fucking get it. But that's probably one of the worst insults that I could fathom is someone thinking that I'm a complete and utter moron. Um, the other thing is, like, I think I was chatting with this guy and I sent a, a sexy pic of me, like a little a little more than he probably saw online. And it was like fucking dark and record scratch and almost obsessively checking my phone over the next 24 hours. Like, holy fuck. He's like, nope, I'm out. And between you and I and our listeners, obviously, um, I've been working really hard on myself, especially from a physical aspect. And it kind of like just hit me in the, punched me in the gut a little that, I was almost anticipating an affirmation immediately. And when I didn't get that, I just started breaking myself down. I get so mad at you when I hear you talk that way, you know, and thinking that way. In my world, the sun doesn't rise or set with you. You are the sun. Well, I, I love mean, you you're, for that. You're, it's, you're everything to me. So when I hear you talk that way, I'm like, first of all, anybody that would think that about you has lost their fucking mind. Um, and, or they're just not all that bright to begin but, with. But I mean, I think I think maybe on some level you relate to this, though. I mean, it's a very for me pathetic, but also but fatalist perspective to have in the situation. Like I'm not good enough. I'm not going to be what they're looking for, and it's disgusting to me. I, I I'm almost to the point of gagging when I think about you don't gag <laughs> when I stop myself and I'm more, I'm conscious and and very aware of it. Like who the fuck is this girl? And why is she so damn determined to sabotage everything right now? Again, this goes back to, I don't know what has encouraged this or shifted my perspective because I'm looking for the hole in the dam, right? Mm -hmm. So I can patch that shit up and I'm still kind of looking for it. Well, I think it's, it's interesting because, you know, and this is a spoiler for all you guys out there that happen to be listening to us right now. We haven't had this conversation before. This no. this right here is the first time she and I've had this conversation where we're individually battling confidence issues in different directions. Mm -hmm. And our perception is that the other person is just fine. Yeah, to a point, I think, call me on my bullshit, but when we started getting a little chippy with each other, and we're, we're typically not like that unless we're under, like, duress, and it's very short-lived, but there, this was kind of prolonged i wouldn't even say like we're not like going at each other's throats per se but maybe a little more on edge than we're used to yeah it's been a little probably a not sharp. since the beginning of covid have we been you know a little just kind of off yeah maybe but i'm talking like short form like the last mm -hmm. two three months yeah yeah that's what i mean like the first like few months of covid we were like mm, get away from me 
You know what I mean? And then we turned into total like codependent assholes during COVID. So. Yeah, but we were still pretty healthy. Like yeah. all things considered, we, our relationship was super healthy. We had healthy relationships with ourselves, right? And right, everything feels like it's been kind of flipped on its head. So yeah, I mean it's it's hard to say that it hasn't been. Uh, you know, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it over with. Yeah. Me too. And I think it's a work in progress. Like, I don't want to pose this question. What would change if all of these thoughts and doubts were banished? And more importantly, how can we do that? This is my problem. So I haven't found the why. And I don't know at this point that finding the hole in the dam is going to actually fix anything at this point. We have to move forward and we have to do better do better for ourselves as individuals and do better for each other. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, not communicating how I was feeling was an oversight, a gross oversight. I I probably should have been a little more honest about it, but frankly, it's embarrassing. Well, I I think what changes if, if you make these changes and you stop enduring these things and allowing yourself to go to these places is the silliness goes away. It, it sounds ridiculous to you when you hear it if you're not enduring it. So these things al- almost become jokes. They almost become funny. Like, okay. That you could ever have felt this way or thought this way. That's what happens, right? If if you put all this to bed, you're like, who the fuck was that guy? Yeah. Or who was that girl? Well, yeah, I am what the fuck this girl. Who are you? No one invited you to the party. Fucking sad little Sally over there in the fucking corner kicking herself. Yeah, well. I didn't raise you to be like that. <laughs> like, who are you telling? I yeah. Mean, I mean, I, Shirley is not what I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call me Shirley. I knew you were going to do that. But, you know, I think it all starts, honestly, the how. Because the last part of your question was, how do we overcome this? Mm-hmm. And for me, this is what I'm telling myself because I very clearly stated it's something I'm struggling with. But it all starts with the man in the mirror. As absurd as it sounds, I was talking to one of our kids' friends one day who was struggling with confidence. And I asked them, when standing in front of the mirror, do you smile? I remember this. Yeah, and they couldn't answer me. They didn't even think to smile at themselves. I told them to make a conscious decision to smile at themselves and think one positive thought about themselves before they let themselves walk away. A few months later, they said it made a huge difference in how they saw themselves. Maybe that would help. Lord knows telling myself I was stupid for thinking the way I did just made it worse. Because all I did was tell myself I sucked, that I was stupid or I was foolish or I was a pussy, right? Because that's kind of what guys do. We just attack ourselves. We don't actually give ourselves any sort of affirmation and tell us that we're actually okay. Yeah, that's fair. And I, you know what's funny? I remember at PCAP Encore talking to a couple we had met and telling them, because, you know, um, we get a pair therapy as needed, right? And a piece of advice that I had gotten was, you know, give my give yourself smile is a big one, right? But also give yourself three affirmations before you move about your day. And those daily affirm- self-affirmations really do help level set your mind. And I've, on brutal honesty, totally gotten out of the fucking habit. Oh, like, so have I. Just our lives because in my head like oh I gotta get up gotta brush my teeth and, and get you know my work on before my day gets crazy because I got an early call today and I need to make it to the grocery store for lunch and like my brain is just fucking fired up and I haven't paused long enough to give myself and it only takes like 30 seconds it's nothing that actually is going to debilitate me or my day and I I need to start doing that again because it does it, it really does change your perspective and could potentially shift the outcome of your entire day or week. Yeah. And I, I think it's important, you know, before I finish my diatribe. That, Sorry. No. Uh, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and kicking your own ass are two different things. Okay. The only counter to darkness is light. Mm-hmm. You can't use more darkness to make yourself feel better. You can't go, come on, pussy, get your shit together. You suck. Stop being weak. It doesn't work. The whole drill sergeant thing, no? No, it doesn't. Okay. All you're doing is going, okay, I can get through this. It doesn't actually make you feel better, right? It's You have to actually understand that you do have value and that calling yourself a fool just makes you feel more negative. I agree. 
I, I love to have the ability to show you what I see. And I think you would probably agree in kind, right? But I say that all the time. You're so fucking sexy and smart and charismatic. And you have this like humble confidence about you that is just so engaging. Like it's like a moth to a flame. You, even at my work event, you have been outside of that industry so fucking long and people are just like, your husband's awesome. And I get to hear this stuff all the fucking time. And I want you to feel the things that I feel when I hear that and feel the things I feel when I see you and I engage with you and I'm proud of you. You're just such an incredible human being that there's just nothing I would give to, to have you have that. And frankly, anyone who doesn't see or stir those values like that experience you had at the club, you know, I, I don't know why we give them permission to occupy those spaces in our minds and affect us on an emotional level because it's undeserving, right? Yeah, it's, uh, what is it, living rent-free in your head? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. what lives rent-free. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Break some of that TikTok shit yeah. out. But So do you think we have any suggestions on how we can help each other through this? Is it beneficial to continue to pursue new lifestyle relationships? Are we doing them a disservice if we're not out there feeling it? You know, um, yes and no, but I think the one thing we can do is remain positive for each other and encourage each other, have a little more dialogue around this and, and see the positive things that we know are true, right? Before last weekend, um, you might have said, and even I might have said that pursuing these lifestyle relationships is a questionable tactic when your mojo is kind of in the dumper, right? Because oh, yeah. is it really fair to show up not at 100%, right? Those are the questions we would ask each other. I think the answer would have been no. As a matter of fact, I had a lot of trepidation about going out last weekend. Okay, so let's talk about the polarizing experience we had. So we went to this one event, um, negative experience, ended up you know, spiraling, right? And then we had this really great experience. Out of the blue. Out of the blue. It was not planned. Unplanned. And I think both, if I had to guess, both you and I were a little nervous going into it, knowing the experience from prior and my lack of success as of late. I think the thing you were nervous about more than you was my reaction and how I was going to be. I I could sense that you were really kind of worried that I was going to spiral and not have a good time. I mean, I, I can't help but want to protect and nurture you. Yeah, because you knew I'd had a, a bad go, and I, I'd, I'd actually said at one point I didn't want to go to St. Augustine. I think you said you were effectively indifferent, which that's a red flag to me. Because mm-hmm. um, usually you peopling is your element. You, like, thrive peopling. That is That charges your batteries. You know, I'm I'm a little ambient about it. Like, it charges me, but it also depletes me at the same time. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So usually when we're about to people, you're like, fuck yeah, let's go. Right. And you were just le- a level of indifference. So my my antenna were, were up, my radar was up. So I knew to approach this a little more gingerly and make sure that I was being very attentive towards you. Yeah, which as it turns out, you didn't have to be, right? So the, the long and short of it was we met a really fun and sexy couple from St. Augustine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... You know, they invited us up to meet a bunch of their friends. And, you know, initially the thought of that terrified me. If this goes like it did last time, I'm not going to be okay. (laughs) Right? Right. I did think about that. I was like, oh, shit. This is like, this is going to be really, you know, a bunch of people we don't know. Could be loud, might not be able to actually, like, introduce ourselves or whatever. Uh, I, I created a bunch of situations in my head that weren't real. And what happened was wildly different than what I created in my head. Yeah. They were fun and friendly and engaging and they were just as fucking sexy as we thought they were going to be. Oh my gosh, more so, like even more so, which I didn't think was possible. Yeah, they actually, once we got to know them, they got hotter, uh, which was even crazier. Ugh. It's because they were hot to begin with. I'm going to start drilling now. <laughs> <laughs> but then we got to, because we, we actually spent like, two hours went like two minutes. Yeah. And then we ended up, they were like, hey, we got to get to this other bar where the rest of these people yeah, are. Yeah, because they had organized the meet and greet. Yeah, they right. were the organizers yeah, yeah. of the meet and greet. And, uh, or the bar crawl or whatever. And then we, we get over there, and there's all these amazing people there, and they're all fucking hot Dude, and sexy. it was probably 
one of the most engaging and fun lifestyle like meet and greets bar crawls I've been to because like everyone I met was fucking fantastic. Yeah. And, and I've not I felt, been to one where everyone was that sexy. Either. I know, like, right? Like I'll I think was, of another adjective in a minute, but it was they were fucking hot, guys. I don't know what else to tell you. But, well, and yeah. I, you know, I, like, and it was reciprocal too. Yeah. In most cases, and I'm just like, oh my fucking god, is this happening right now? Yeah, it was. Like, it was this really is great. something. It really was, and I think we left there with like four new couples that we're friends with, which yeah, I'm I was so, not ready for. Like I, I know they can't. No one can see me right now except you. But I'm like beaming ear to ear, just smiling because it was just, just even thinking about the evening was just so much fucking fun. Yeah. And I think the thing that made me feel the best about it and told me that the version of me that was having this confidence crisis, not four weeks before, was an idiot because no one in that group knew who the hell Mickey and Mallory were. That's true. And I've thought for a while that maybe that's the only value we brought to the table. And that was causing me a confidence issue as well. Yeah. I'm with you, which ties into the imposter syndrome. Yeah. Which is kind of why these episodes are married at the hip. Uh, But that said, it was a really, really happy ending. It really was. And I think we did two things. I I know that, that there was that mental chatter that you had. I had it too before we got there. I also think we both made a conscious decision, whether we talked about it or not, to at least go into it with an open mind, right? We leave ourselves open. Yes, it's an element of being vulnerable, but I think we were able to do that, which lent itself to having really great conversation, being open and warm and honest and just, you know, going, fuck it. We're going to have a good time regardless of what this means. And I think that's kind of where we've been most successful is just going, no matter what happens, we're going to have a fucking good time, you and I. Yeah, and we do. <laughs> 99 and we did. of the time. And we did. We had a great time, actually. And the better time we had, the better it got. Yeah. Like, as we got more positive, it got better. And yeah. it just turned into a great time. Uh, it turned into a love fest after we left, you know, where we were all just texting back and forth and talking about what a great time we had. Uh, just really fucking awesome i can't thank those guys enough if any of them happened to listen uh we were just enamored with all of you and had the best time man i want to do it again like tomorrow yeah right immediately (laughs) because when good shit like that happens you want more of it give it all to me well we got a couple of days to work get to have work to get through before we head off to see the grand spot (sighs) but before we do that we've got a whiskey of the month coming up yes we do Uh, Now, of course, this is the actual fucking whiskey of the month for the month that we're in. This is March. We're going to get back to you right after the break. We come back after the break. We're going to let Mallory do the thing. She doesn't have to do it right now. But we'll be back right after this with whiskey of the month. You've been listening to Casual Swinger. And welcome back to Casual Swinger. I'm Mallory. And I am your resident drunk, Mickey. Yes, we are drunks because we don't go to meetings. Why would I ever do such a thing? Pshaw. To find people to drink with. (laughs) That's fucked up, but hilarious. Okay, that was probably insensitive. For anybody recovering from alcoholism, please accept my sincere apologies and send them to Black and Kinky Podcast at... (gasps) No? Bomber can... Michael Gordon. (laughs) Bomber can field my hate mail. (laughs) Fucked up. I'm messaging them right now. That'll be great. Giving them a heads up. My husband's an ass hat. Oh, my bad. Why are we here? What is this segment? Ah, that's right. You guys are used to this shit by now. We love the story of a great whiskey as much as the whiskey itself. Mm-hmm. So the story of March's whiskey of the month goes back to the very birth of bourbon itself. Ooh. 233 years ago in Georgetown, Kentucky. Ah, so close. I was going to do a whole, like, Sophia, like, picture this, Sicily. 1789. (laughs) So before we let the cat out of the bag, hey, sorry, what time is it? Candy is dandy, but whiskey makes you frisky. And there it is. Ah, (laughs) so sexy. I love that voice. Oh, my God, she's the best. Uh, So the whiskey of the munch for March 2022 is... Elijah Craig small batch. Oh, I'm actually drinking that right now. You really are. This is a staple in the casual compound here. You've been drinking Elijah Craig for some time here, and it actually is a very solid fucking whiskey. 
That's kind of the best part about Elijah Craig is it is a incredibly solid whiskey. It's not great. It's not bad. It's just solid and it's cheap. And it's, it's really good. <laughs> it's cost it's, will, will go yeah. cost effective. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just at the price point, it's great. Right? Actually, it, it is. And this is a whiskey. I, I'll totally drink it on the rocks. I will let it uh, melt a little, give a little water back because I feel like it brings the flavor profile out a little. But I actually like to do like a spin on a Moscow Mule or do it with like uh, ginger, like yeah. ginger ale. Like well, it's a good whiskey to mix with because I think it enhances the flavor profile of it. It is. And and I had had a few, you know, I had had a few whiskeys that I was considering to add to the list before we chose one here. And, you know, this is one that, I mean, honestly, when we started Whiskey of the Month, I wanted it to be the first Whiskey of the Month because it I is. use it all the time. It's your go-to whiskey. It's your old, reliable, and it's got a fantastic story. Like, the name Elijah Craig, for any whiskey historians out there, should enthuse some excitement, right? Well, it really should. So, the name Elijah Craig, just so you guys know, and this is into the story, we always like a good story, right? What do we uh, like more than a great whiskey is a whiskey with a great story. And if we can have both... Bingo. Money. So, Reverend Elijah Craig is widely thought of as the father of bourbon. He was a Baptist preacher, he was an educator, and he was an entrepreneur who built the first paper and wool mills in Georgetown, Kentucky. No shit. But for all oh, his cool. industries, it was his gift as a distiller and an innovator that brought around his greatest acclaim, which was the birth of bourbon. God as, bless our know, Jesus juice. That's right. Cheers to the Jesus juice, right? But before going any further in our story, it's important that we note that his legacy will forever be stained. It'll be stained by his connection to slavery. Like this other Kentucky landowners of his generation, Elijah Craig owned slaves. And, you know, to Heaven Hill's credit, and Heaven Hill is the distiller for uh, Elijah Craig. This is where it gets good. It is. They have a mission to uncover the roles of these laborers and how they contributed to the birth of the bourbon industry and what happened to them and their families. Elijah Craig is actively engaged in academic research and other initiatives, not just to uncover their past, but to make America today a more just and equitable country. You know, I, I, this may sound... I, you know, I don't know how it sounds, because I'm sitting here as a middle-aged white woman. You can't erase the past, but I can appreciate the fact that they're not trying to hide, deny. They're trying to be transparent, and they're trying to do better, be better, and provide additional funding and awareness. Yeah. Well, and, and I think they kind of, they did, they said it, right? I mean, like a lot of other landowners and entrepreneurs in Kentucky in that era, he did what everybody else did. So I don't know that socially what he was doing, he don't think he thought he was wrong, but time and ethics time and humanity. Time is the ultimate you know, judge. Yeah, time's the yeah. judge and the equalizer. And time and humanity and, and ethical growth made him out to be a, not a good person, obviously, for what he was doing. But he did something that changed history. So we still have to acknowledge that this person that by today's standards is, would be a scumbag piece of shit uh, did something that changed everything for bourbon because he's the first person that ever actually discovered that if you char a, a, a new oak barrel and then put alcohol in it, it changes the entire profile of the spirit. And that's the foundation of whiskey in and of itself. Correct. Well, you see, whiskey is four things. Whiskey is grain, mm -hmm. fire, right, water, and time. And like you said, time is the arbiter of all things. With enough time, things change. And the time that this that this alcohol spends in this barrel, the more time it spends, like Ingrid said in our whiskey episode a while back, mm -hmm. the wood does the work. And that's what happens. And of course, finishes and things are applied and time, things like that. But, you know, Elijah Craig discovered this way back in 1789. <laughs> I like how you had the horse neigh in there. Way, way back. <laughs> way, <laughs> way back. You did not just pull a fucking Mr. Ed reference because you know that was my jam early in the mornings before school. I'm just saying. How old are you? I, what, it was like Nick at Night because I got, got dropped off so early. I would watch Nick at Night while it was still fucking dark outside in the morning <laughs> before school. Yeah, well, what he did was he was the first to char a new oak barrel and use it to alter the flavor of the spirits. But how he discovered it, to this day, remains a mystery. Was it an accident? or well, they, Some say it was a fire. 
that actually burned the barrels he was storing the whiskey in, and it created the flavor by accident. So it was something Son he of a stumbled bitch. upon. Now, that's what some people say, but other people say that he stored his whiskey in what were sugar barrels, and sugar barrels were charred to prevent rot, right? So oh, shit, I didn't he, know when that. When he stored it in sugar barrels, the sugar barrels improved the flavor how, of the spirit. How the fuck am I from Florida where sugar cane is like a huge industry down here that I didn't know they that? They sealed the barrels with fire. Did not know that. Yeah, and that's, so there you go. I'm so, getting learned up in here. Got all kinds of shit. So, anyway, however it happened, Elijah Craig knew he had discovered something great. He continued to refine his process, imparting smooth and rich flavor to the spirit that would become known as bourbon. 233 years later, he's still known as the father of bourbon. So, a little more about Elijah Craig's small batch here. Um, you can get it at a price point of only $26. Cheap AF. Yeah, by far and away one of the most economic bourbons whiskeys that we have recommended to date but again it's very reliable and at that price point the jump from your jack and jim is not that great so if you've been a little hesitant you know because a lot of our whiskeys tend to be closer to that 50 dollar price point this is a good one to gamble on i don't think you'll you'll be unhappy um so let's talk about the outstanding value here um this is distilled by Heaven Hill, which is one of my favorite distilleries. And it's got a mash bill offering. Um, it's a 78% corn, 12% bar- malted barley, and 10% rye. Right, which is, that is about right for a bourbon. It is. It is, actually. So the rye side, that, that 10% rye, when it gets over that for me, it becomes too sweet on the palate mm-hmm. for me and too close to a rye. Right. Well, you get a high rye content. It gets a little spicier. Yeah. It is, and I, I don't know that it's, le- like, I say legally, is this somebody's going to come and, like, fucking police this shit, right. like, and arrest them, but, like, after that 10 points, like, it just, it does, it's not really a bourbon for me anymore. Yeah. Well, you like stuff that tastes like burnt wood. Like, that's your I do. jam. I, I love the savory with the, the, uh, the afternoons of, like, the vanilla and the caramel and the nut, which this actually has, and the oak really pops out from the start. Yeah. Yeah, it makes some sense. I mean, and, and I think you're right. It does pop out with a ton of oak, a lot of vanilla, I think, it, it, as uh-huh. well, when you really... Again, it's hot, right? I mean, it's it it's is. a 90 proof. It's young. It, it's what they call a NAS, N-A-S, or no age statement, right. because it used to be a 12-year, you know, 15 years ago, but demand meant that they couldn't right. do that anymore. So this is a non-age statement, but the average age for this is somewhere between six and nine years. Right. Because it's a blend, right? It's a blend. It's a blend. So, um, I know personally it's one of your favorites. It's a regular drinker in this house uh, for both of us, mostly you. Um, I kind of, you know, I'm a little bit of a hoe when it comes to my bourbon, so I make the rounds. But this is like a a real fucking staple. Um, it's a go-to for me. Yeah, you said it. I think you described it as a nice round mouthfeel. Yeah, I, I do. And what that is, is it's not extraordinarily hot. I'm not going... <sighs> After I, after I, you know, have it, it gives me a full flavor. I definitely taste the oak in it. I taste the vanilla in it. And then it has a follow-up as well. And that round always has a follow-up, which is a different flavor, whether it's fruit flavors or, in this case, a cinnamon follow-up. Yeah, and it's not overwhelming. I think that's what's great about this overall impression that you get, that none of those things are greatly overwhelming to the palate. Yeah, it's just a balanced, good whiskey. It's... I, It's just good. I mean, it's not great at anything, but it's good. Yeah. And again, you can drink it, you know, on the rocks. Neat. Just be a little prepared. Again, it's a little hot, so you'll have a little heat going down. Um, But it's a great mixer, too. Like, again, it's just fucking solid. Good in an old-fashioned, good in Manhattan. It's good over ice. Let it sit for a couple minutes, give you a little bit of a water back, and hit it. Sure, yeah, and, a, and there's definitely going to be people like the diehard whiskey folk out there. They're like, oh, but this brand is better, and this brand's better, and that's great. And you know what's great about bourbon in general? If it tastes better to you, that's fine. You are right. If it's right for you, it's right for you. This that's is just right. uh, another recommendation for from from our bar. That's right, and for our bourbon friends out there that would kick my ass over Bib and Tucker for February because <laughs> it was a sourced whiskey, this yeah. one isn't sourced, so bite my ass. Yeah, sorry guys, it's okay. It's I think it's fine to use somebody else's juice. It is. MGP's good shit. Yeah. So is Evan Hill. 
Yeah, man. But look, Whiskey of the Month is about giving our friends out there access to whiskeys that are great at their price point and demystifying the scores of whiskeys on the wall at your liquor store today. Any of you that are going to a whiskey store, a liquor store, whatever, there's no fucking whiskey stores, but you get what I mean. You go to a liquor store, and there's so many choices. The object of Whiskey of the Month is to give you guys a little bit of guidance on something that might be good, might be tasty for you. That's always been our goal, and we hope that's what we're achieving. Elijah Craig's small batch is exactly what it needs to be at a $30 price level, offering everything bourbon should be and not breaking the bank. Absolutely give it a try for your favorite cocktail, and you will be glad you did. Amen. And if you didn't, what did you say? Called Black and Kinky? That's right. If you've got complaints, send them to our complaint <laughs> department care of the Black and Kinky podcast. I'm going to I'm gonna tell them you made me say that now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whatever. We'll see how many complaints they get. It'll be fucking great. <laughs> They're just like, what the, the fuck is wrong with you? Department? You guys suck so much. In, A.K.A. Casual Swinger. But anyway. <laughs> hey, why don't you tell everybody where to find us? We get the fuck out of here. We got another episode, by the way, that should be on time in two weeks. We will let you guys know. We're going to try and get it in the can before we leave to go see yes. the grand spawn. I love it. We're trying to, like, I don't know, do this shit right. Yeah, right. So we are Casual Swinger everywhere. You can find us at CasualSwinger.com, podcast at CasualSwinger.com if you have any questions or notes you want to shoot us. We are on social media, on the interwebs. You can find us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and the Twitter. The uh, Twitter. The Twitter. And we're also on the dating sites. Check us out. That's Double Date Nation, Cassidy, SLS, and SDC. There it is. Folks, this has been a conversation about confidence and the man or the woman in the mirror and what you can do to sort your shit if you get down in the dumps like yours truly did over the last couple of months. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Thanks for checking out the Whiskey of the Month. The next episode's not going to have Whiskey of the Month because we're not going to do two months' worth of whiskey in two episodes. So we'll get this shit right next time, right? Yes, and I need to do a toy box because I have a new discovery that I need to share with the world. Oh, my God. I know. Do you have any more Michael Jackson quotes you want to sing before we get out of here? No, I think I'm done with the singing thing. I think I've proved my point that I can't sing my way out of a paper bag. Oh, I think you just missed a great opportunity. You said toy box and didn't sing beat it in the same set. But hey, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's enough Fuck from you. us, guys. You've been listening to Casual Swimming. <laughs>